little bit different, different ways to set it up. So today we're going to be focusing on more of the marketing side of things. So how do you use when you have a, a pre-existing list of email? Um, email addresses, how do you use them to start getting them from you know, just email addresses into a potential lead and into a client. So this is what today's topic is mostly going to be about. Okay? Uh, but feel free to stop me anytime. Yeah, go for it. Just a quick question to yeah. the front of all of this. Yeah. Um, my struggle is being basically with the, anti, the new anti-spam laws. Okay. Yeah. Do you touch upon that? Yeah, we will. We'll, okay. we'll yeah. have a slide that's on there as well. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not pretending no, to be no, a lawyer. So I, I will give you the most basic things that I can get here. Um, I always like to start with this slide. It's, uh, it's busy entrepreneurs uh, trying to take orders and trying to stock, um, trying to do inventory, trying to do the you know, the tau, like afterwards. So you can see, uh, we're always busy running our business. So um, digital marketing is, is only one part, and marketing is only one part of the business. Of course, it has to uh, work well with your operation. So if your operation is not ready, then, then marketing is actually you know, the next thing that you need to worry about. Um, but uh, a quick slide here. It's about how marketing is in today's world. Uh, here I'll probably have seen it five times <laughs> already. So uh, this is really what, what a lot of people are thinking about when they have a business. When they met somebody, they're like, hey, this is my website, check on my website. However, people who check on your website, these are your visitors. Okay, so with visitors, they don't necessarily have the intention they may have the interest of what you're offering, however, they don't have the intention of what you're offering. So the differentiation between visitor and a lead really is that whether they have the intention of, of getting to know you a little bit more. Okay, so in order to convert or to change a person from a visitor into a lead, uh, we often have something called uh, a lead magnet in order for you to capture. So for example, if you go into a, uh, a website a lot of times you will see a download a uh, white paper or a free estimate for something. What they usually do is that they provide uh, some education, or they provide some services uh, in exchange for your email address and your contact information. Right, so that in itself is capturing the lead. So that moves a, some, a person from a website visitor into a lead, a potential lead. Okay? Um, and with that lead, uh, you have the permission to start sending them uh, email. Right? Of course, you have to make sure that they take and say that you're going to want to receive further information from you. So in order from a lead stage into a customer stage, it takes um, six or seven times of touch points for them to get to know you, get to know your product, get to know your services. And that's what we call a nurturing stage. So with email nurturing as, as a stage, a lot of times you'll see it in... Um, the newsletter that you receive. So you may be regularly receiving something, it may be up to the fifth time or the sixth time before you're actually realizing, oh, I'm actually receiving something, okay? So, um, and then the offer would be something that, that's that little push to push the, um, the potential uh, customer into being a customer himself, okay? So, for example, uh, Mother's Day is coming, so uh, an offer would be like, hey, no, we having a Mother's Day special. You know, why don't you come in now? So that would probably work very well for Harold, okay? <laughs> with, um, with the jewelry business. So, and after they become a customer, you know, definitely send them more communication about about um, you know, giving them feedback, giving them review, and then uh, when they when you impress them, they will often lead into more referrals. Okay, so this is really the the whole um, I would call it the marketing funnel, right? In terms of uh, today's world. Okay, so why email marketing? I know today like we hear a lot about like Facebook, Instagram, you know, Google Ads and stuff like that. Uh, believe it or not, email still works very well, in particular for B2B, like business to business communication, a lot of times is still being done. Okay, okay that's fine. So it's, that's also one of the reasons why uh, a lot of times as business owners, we see and we read a lot of industry news because we are reacting better. Um, with the B2B emails, okay? Um, they're saying that 30% of the retail email list, they actually had made a purchase from a retailer. So once you have established that bond, once you have like, went to Best Buy, once you went to, um, um, what's another good one, that Amazon, okay? You start getting them email, you feel like you have the permission and you feel like 
um, you want to keep going back, right? And that's part of the reason of why email works very well. Uh, some of the don't do's right now is like don't, uh, if you use the word donate, uh, it will actually reduce the, the percentage. People don't like that. People like information. People don't like uh, specific requests, okay, for a certain email. Uh, and a typical marketing, uh, email marketing rate is about 25%. Uh, and usually when people need to click on something, it's about 4%. Well, I was hoping that there's a slide uh, about me, but I think it's going to happen at the end. So, <laughs> could, could, could cover yeah. on the last one there, the, the, the 25%. Yeah. So if you send out 20, if you send out 100%, you know, 2,000 yeah. emails, That's right. That's right. you're suggesting that only 4% are going to get. That's right. Uh, so when you send out 100 email, 25 of them would probably be read. Right, because right now what we're talking about is we, we're talking about sending out an email, uh, email blast in, as opposed to individual emails. Yeah. Okay, so uh, individual emails, they usually would land on your inbox. It's not called email. spam? Uh, pardon me? It's not called spam? Uh, this one? No, so no, when you say when you blast them out like that. So when you're blasting them... If it's all not, permissioned. If, if there's no permission, then that's spam, and you yeah. can get into Castle, uh, yeah. the anti-spam uh, law issue. However, uh, when you start getting their email address, right, um, you would probably need a, um, something called the implied, that's the next slide. So something that, that's the implied um, kind of consent. Okay, so this is actually something that, that's quite important. So the CASEL law, which is Canadian anti-spam law, okay, uh, it started to um, be enforced since 2017. Okay, so what it does is that it, it, it we, it needs you to have consent, either if it's implied consent or an express consent. So when you have something like an ex uh, then you can start sending them, right, stuff. Of course, but uh, what, if I, what if I pick up your card somewhere, mm -hmm. right, Yeah. and send you email? Is that right. considered spam? Uh, that can, con can be considered spam unless you talk to them verbally and say, hey, do you mind if I send you something, right? So that... It's, it's a verbal kind of agreement, but it's in Canada, that's still part of an agreement. Um, however, a lot of people don't ask that. Right? So when people feel offended, then that's when you say, okay, I'm sorry about that. Right? So, so if I've asked for a client's email address in order to send them a, a PDF of their the document that I prepared for them, and I don't tell them I might later send them a, a, a follow-up uh, advertising a, a special that I have for that, is that legal? Uh, no, so what it is that, uh, from what I've heard from you, is that they've already requested a PDF from you. Uh, or, I'm or in the office, I said, I'm going to send you a PDF. They said, great, I can forward it to my insurance yeah. company. Yeah. yeah. You just have to unsubscribe. Pardon me? Yeah, yeah so, that, so, so, that they can then, so that they can then opt out if they don't like you. Yeah. Yeah, so to me, they've already requested a communication from you, and yeah. that, that is okay. Yeah. That is okay. But in every single email, Okay, um, there needs to be identification. Is this actually being enforced? Um, Big time. <laughs> is it? For, for a lot of the larger businesses, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if I were CRTC, uh, I would probably go into the big company mm -hmm. and start like making sure that they're enforced first. For small companies, it's a gray area, but when I'm teaching stuff or when I'm going through with the clients, I would tell them, hey, we need to make sure that you have implied consent for the last two years. Right. We actually need to make sure that before we establish a relationship with the client, we have to make sure that that list uh, from them actually has a, uh, a consent, implied consent. So let's say that I was a Bell customer, yeah. and then two years ago I went over to Virgin, but Bell is still sending me emails. Is right. that spam? Um, so Bell and Virgin, I do believe that they are the same company, oh. same parent company. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. so you I do believe that they are. Yeah. If I can clip onto that, even in, in even in the case of prior, somewhere in that email they'll have an unsubscribe. Yeah. So if you haven't hit the unsubscribe, if they've had permission originally, yeah. originally, then uh, then they're still okay. Yeah, and that's what I need to learn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So part of part of this, there's actually four big points in here. Okay, so these are the four uh, pieces of information that you need to have in the CASEL law. Uh, there's more detail in the CRTC website, um, there's a link for it, and I can send out the, the information for you guys afterwards as well. Um, but if it is, there needs to be four pieces of information. So the consent, there needs to be identification, so meaning that on every single email, there needs to be a mailing address, um, at least a mailing address, and the phone number if you have, 
um, there is often an, uh, an email address that people can reach you out to you. That's that needs to be there. Uh, there needs to be a, uh, having an unsubscribe mechanism. So that's what uh, Fake was saying that there needs to be an unsubscribe button. And most email programs will take care of it. That they will have it. Uh, I think CRTC did go and uh, start enforcing one case that when the marketing manager uh, switched over to the software, the unsubscribe button did not work. Okay, so they got hit for that. Right, that uh, that's one case I remember. Uh, truth in advertising, that's just the basics of, of marketing. So if you're trying to sell something mm -hmm. uh, on your one email newsletter, you don't click on it and you sell other stuff. Then that's a big no-no for CRTC as well. The challenge I'm having right now is like, historically I've always got my referrals from other, other professionals. So I'm looking at creating this way. You go to their web page and you go to their contact page. And according to the Act, Section 106 9, whatever it is, it says that's basically it's an implied consent. So I sought an opinion from, from one lawyer who advertised himself as a specialist in, in castle law. And uh, he, he abstained. He's actually referred me to a one of the big, uh, big law firms downtown. So right. uh, I don't know if you've got any input on that. Uh, you mean, so what do you mean is that on the let's say, I go to a, uh, let's say I go to a law firm. Yeah, yeah. And as long as they don't have, according to when you read the act, okay. as long as they don't have a, 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 a proviso that they don't accept uh, any solicitation on that page, okay. then the fact that they've posted their, their, their contact information on their website is implied consent. That's, that's when I say I'm not a lawyer, to say yeah, that. No, but, but what I mean is you that... Know, even the lawyers are shying away from it. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know, so I'm not going to try to tackle that question directly. But, uh, but for business owners, what it is that um, if you have a website that has a form, right, um, just need to make sure that you have a little checkbox that says, hey, I want to continue to get, your, um, get communications from you or along that line. Uh, I want to sign up to... For a me, it's only website. a one-time request, though. Yeah, so that's what I mean. It's, um, on a one-time request. That's so all I have is one-time request. Yeah, so I'd also think that the lawyers also would be money in that way, is saying that hey, if you have a one-time request, that has already established a business relationship. And if that's the case, then yes, you can you can keep. No, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. When, when I'm ABC business lawyer, right? And, and I, I'm searching websites for business lawyers, and he pops up. Now, I want to send him a one-time email, yeah. uh, you know, whether he's, you know, when he goes to my website, if he's, if he's interested, right. he can then get back to me. Yeah. If not, I forget about him, or yeah. I, put yeah. him, I put him into the, uh, you know, done, uh, uh, and so as long as on his website, the way I read the act, as long as on his website, there is no stipulation that I do not accept uh, unsolicited um, uh, uh, requests, right. then then it falls under the uh, under the uh, implied consent right. purview. So yeah, I mean I, I totally agree with you. Okay. Um, uh, that is to me is no different than you would see that he has a website listed or an email address listed and just send him an email. I just say hi. <laughs> this is what I do. Is that something that you're interested? In? And to that's me, allowed. That's, you say? Um, you think? So the law itself, okay, I'm not trying to interpret the law, but this is in a normal business setting, that is, I think to me, that is acceptable. Because to me it's acceptable because uh, you simply ask me, hey, I want to talk to you. If they're not willing to talk to me, then that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, it's, I think it's okay, but it's just, it's no, no different from- But well, we better find out. Yeah, but it, we better find out, <laughs> that's for sure. And better ask a lawyer to find out yeah. about it. Because to me, it's like, you know, it's the contact information yeah. number is for somebody to send out, you know, to, to start asking questions. Yeah, right. yeah I, want a, I want a written opinion on it anyway, so. That's true. But I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be curious to find out about that too. Okay. Because to me- uh, I'll tell you what, I'll do it, share the cost. How's that sound? Sure, that'd be great. That'd be great if you ask me to uh, share, share the information. Thank you. <laughs> so, Humphrey, question yeah. about the uh, sure. subscribe. So, yeah. if I send emails to my existing clients, does that mean, are you saying that every single email I have to have unsubscribe mechanism? Uh, if you send it out through a um, kind of a automated program. Okay. But if Not it's just a, own, exactly. Yeah. Okay. If it's just an, an individual kind of uh, communication, then don't need to be unsubscribed. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. Clear? <laughs> Clear as mud. <laughs> okay. So um, we talked about email programs. So obviously, um, there is the regular Gmail that you use. Um, when we're talking about email programs, we're really talking about email blast kind of programs. So when you have collected a list of programs, right? So there is often um, a list of programs, and then there is also um, that you can use it to send out weekly newsletters or monthly newsletters. Okay, so there are some simpler ones that we uh, that I'm sure you have seen before. Uh, so Mailchimp being one of them. Uh, constant Contact. I think a lot of the also associations still uses Constant Contact. Uh, you, you can probably see them at the bottom as well of the email. Uh, a Weber is another popular one. Uh, there's there are some for small businesses that works a lot better because it combines with something called the CRM, the Customer Relationship Management Program. Uh, so the ones that we use uh, is Active Campaign. Uh, there's also the Salesforce uh, and the HubSpot and Infusionsoft. So the reason why people want to combine it with a, uh, a CRM is because you can use that and leverage that to see which of your customers or which of your potential leads actually open the email. Uh, actually react to the email, and you can uh, you know, move them to different stages of your sales funnel accordingly. Okay, so I'm going to go in a little bit more detail about it. Have anybody of you uh, used the, used any of these software before, like Mailchimp or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, Mailchimp. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We actually have been moving quite a few clients from from Mailchimp into something called like an active campaign that has the automation. Is that better than Hub, HubSpot? Yeah, HubSpot. You know, I see is. Active campaign, you find that better than HubSpot? Uh, what do you use HubSpot for? Oh, no, I did keep yeah. on chasing me down, and, yeah. and I'm, I'm somewhat enamored with yeah. with with uh, they're a pretty big outfit, right? So, uh, yep, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, I, I do think that uh, it's something that's worth comparing mm -hmm. to. Um, HubSpot, uh, they tend to work with large type, a little bit larger business because of the pricing and the cost. Mm. Right, um, and they do a lot of things that a lot of business owners don't necessarily use. But I can go through a little bit uh, more about Mailchimp and Auto, uh, Auto uh, Active Campaign. So Mailchimp uh, is definitely one of the most popular email platform uh, out there because it's so simple to connect. And if you use any type of uh, website like Shopify, Eventbrite, uh, WordPress, they all have a very good integration with it. Uh, and for a lot of people, that's a great start. That's a great start. Um, it, it is free, up to 2,000 subscribers, uh, with a little MailChimp button at the bottom. Okay, so um, easy to use. Again, I just, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun to use that. Sorry, Henry, what do, we, what do they mean by subscribers? Like names? Yeah, emails, okay. emails, email addresses. So if you have collected email addresses from your previous clients, or if you have met somebody uh, on a, um, you know, a networking event, or if you hosted a booth, if you, you know collected a lot of business cards, but those are subscribers. Okay, those subscribers. Um, are you familiar with NetSuite? And NetSuite. What, they, no, what they're not. offering right now? No, they, no, they, no. they say they're. I mean, I've had two demonstrations so far, but they're okay. offering all of it, okay. as well as the accounting program. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, again, Could it's be. like, which one do you go with? Right? Well, I do. I do like the fact that um, if they are um, integrated, right, and if you can actually make sure that this part like the email part, the email marketing part, talk to your, your sales part. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of businesses, they don't have a distinction between marketing and sales. So what I find is that marketing is, is you know, really just casting up the net. You know, sales is the one that you start weaving out individual fishes out of the pond, right? So that's the difference. Uh, but having a tool that's kind of combined together, um, that's when you start having the ability to have your sales and say, hey, you know what? Uh, can I talk to you a little bit more in detail about this product that you may have clicked five times before? All right, so that's the ability of using a same tool. All right. um, so with Active Campaign, uh, it's they really building it out of um, the automation side of things. So when I say automation, um, it really means that when it combines with like a CRM, let's say when a contact has clicked on the email, they have clicked on the link. Let's say they click on your uh, your product page. Let's say Harold's Jewelry. Like, no, I'm clicking on the uh, the appraisal page. But you also see that that person hasn't finished the transaction or hasn't finished making the booking. Then you can kind of set a flag that says, um, but this person have the interest 
okay? And if you're really sophisticated, that's when you start sending them a different message about, hey, we're running a promotion for Mother's Day about, you know, appraisal, something like that, okay? Uh, but having that automation ability um, in active campaign, you can really, really uh, be specific and you, you can actually segment the different types of customers based on their behavior. We can not. <laughs> so, yeah. in your in, in what you presented, I find that sometimes I'm halfway through filling a form in, and then I stop. Yeah. And what I really quite appreciate is they'll come back to me and they'll say, "Oh, we noticed you stopped at this point. Mm -hmm. Can we help you?" I quite like that. I mean, yeah. is that something that you can? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's something that can be done. That's something okay. that can be done. Uh, same with like when you go to Amazon, right, or something when you buy something put it in the cart and you never finish paying for it. I mean, like within five minutes, it'll send you an email saying, hey, yeah. by the way, you have this left in the box. Right? So that's something quite powerful as well. And uh, I know it's a little bit out of the scope for this workshop, but we use the same information to create advertisements on Facebook. Wow. Right? So imagine that you actually start shopping and then um, you don't finish it and then you start seeing ads and say, hey, by the way, we have some My wife complains about that all the time. I know, I know. But if the big boys yeah, are doing yeah. it... Walk past the store and all of a sudden, boom. <laughs> <laughs> but the big boys are doing it, and for small businesses, there are tools that can be done, that can that can leverage this kind of technology to, to be done as well. All right, so um, that's the beauty of technology in, in marketing. Um, are you, you yeah. going to email us a, a yeah, I could. slide? Yeah, I could. Yeah, sure. No problem. No problem. Uh, so by having something like an automation, what you can do is we can create like a, a different workflow and you can combine different triggers, different actions, different logic like I just the one that I just talked about. Uh, it is a little bit pricier. Um, so it's about forty dollars a month for five hundred users. That's uh, and you you're paying this to who? This to active campaign. Okay. To active campaign. And that's for the automation program. Yeah. And uh, that's when we start getting the pricing, and uh, HubSpot, I think, is another zero behind it, that kind of pricing. So that's when you see the differences. And when you start comparing features to, to the pricing and the benefits, you can see that the similar benefits. We can get that in a little bit more. Okay, so lead magnet. Uh, if you actually recall what a lead magnet is, um, it was actually the first stage that when people stumble upon your website, uh, you want to be able to uh, offer them something of value in exchange for their uh, for their email, okay? So a lot of times it would be um, something that's that's relevant to them, uh, something that can probably solve a problem, uh, something that, can, that they can act upon, right? So we actually just recently, Sona actually created one uh, recently. Uh, we're trying to target a real estate agent who are interested in marketing. So we actually created an infographic um, for them to download uh, about the different generations of, of buyers or sellers and how do they react differently to to online advertising and uh, to uh, for realtors. So that's something that's of value for real estate agents who are looking to market to different uh, types of audiences. Right, so for us that's a lead magnet. That's a lead magnet. Um, so this is often the first stage when we start thinking of, of ways to um, collect emails. Having a lead magnet in mind it's, it's actually one more important thing. Gavin, do you have a lead magnet? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, what is it? Um, it's called, uh, so what people are searching for virtual offices, they're gonna go to four or five different websites, so mm -hmm. we have a, a virtual office comparison guide. I compare the competitors and just put a few like check marks, you know, yeah. green check mark and then X, so like the competitors. Um, just in terms of the services that's included. So. Yeah. Yeah, something that was valuable for someone seeking. Yeah, for sure. And do you update that yourself? Do you do the research and update it? Or? No. Uh, typically, I haven't updated it recently. Typically, the services don't change too much. So. It's a bit like the Amazon reviews, they make them up. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to their websites. It's, hmm? You just have to look at their websites. For Amazon? For. No. Yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's you can do that it. once a week, you do it once a month, right? Yeah, but I think it's like what he's saying is he's not 
if I um, can use a story, uh, one of the most successful realtors in the world, Kokoran, out of New York, that's exactly what she did, where she became the expert and went in every day and told everybody she was an expert. Well, sooner or later, she was. <laughs> everybody bought her mailing list, which was huge. That's what made her the millions, just by going, you've got a great idea. All I'm saying is maybe you're not applying it as, as often as you should, yeah. so that, like the Kakaran story, if you go and look that up, <laughs> you'll <show. laughs> <laughs> Like the Dem saying that Trump's in collusion, right? Huh? <laughs> they drive me insane. Don't get me on that. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, so, so think about what a lead magnet is. So think about something that is um, of value for your potential client. Right. So that would be something that you can put in on your website right away. Right. Okay. Any other questions about lead magnets so far? Yeah. Okay. No. Good idea. I yeah. like it. Rick, what would you think would be a good lead, lead magnet for you? I'm not sure. I guess um, I haven't really thought about it. I guess my stage is more to just maintain and service my clients yeah. right, and, and get clients to sure. referrals yeah, yeah. Yeah. And rather than just getting someone off the which may not be my mm. target client first you're first. in a life insurance business yeah, yeah. Mm. well you, you can, can also kind of, they got all kinds of nice lead magazines so you can yeah yeah, yeah but this is some that I guess yeah, yeah for sure you just have to pick point. and choose the ones that work for you yeah, mm -hmm. right um, I also want to offer you up this this page as well so this page um, talks about the different stages of the funnel so if they are very early uh, versus if they're very late so when um, Gavin was talking about the comparison stage so if you look at it the top of the funnel is usually when they don't know much about you okay if they don't know much about you uh, but towards the, the bottom of the funnel is when they are almost ready to buy Okay, so when Gavin is saying that he wants to start comparing uh, the competitors, okay, they're almost ready to buy because they basically know okay, what a virtual office is, they basically know what, a, uh, what, what some of the players are, who some of the players are, and they kind of down to the stage and say, okay, should I go with Central Park or should I go with uh, WeWork or WeGuess, whatever, uh, whatever your, whoever your competitors are. And that's when they say, okay, I'm going to start downloading the, the guy. Okay? To me, that may be a little bit late already, Okay, maybe, <laughs> but those are really the, the higher conversion rate kind of uh, kind of uh, funnels uh, towards the end. So uh, you can also do other stuff. So with education articles. So uh, I don't care. Runs a lot of uh, the blogs, and you want to do a video. You mentioned to it, mm -hmm. right? So that would be a great great top of the funnel type, just to get people to be aware of your services. Um, for Rick, you can probably do a checklist, you know, kind of a, a calculator or worksheet, a budget worksheet that would probably draw out some of the, the clients that help them quali help you qualify them mm -hmm. as well. So um, these are some of the ways. Uh, towards the middle of the funnel, that's when you start to want to get more in depth about telling people, okay, what are some of the things that you can do to help them? All right, so having a webinar like today, uh, being it recorded, having it replayed, by having them share it uh, builds up that expertise, and that's really what I'm doing now as well. So, uh, and then, yeah. Is this page on your website? This page is kind of on my website. So, uh, the way that what I can do is I can also forward this, okay. this, this presentation with the video to you as well, so we can actually take, take a look at it. Uh, I can't see that far. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Come so, on. I can definitely go into a little bit more detail um, with this. Uh, with you as well. Forgot my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, once we talk about the the, the funnel contents, I also want to talk about a kind of a, a sequence, because we talk about automation having a sequence. So, how many of you actually recently signed up uh, for a like a free course online or anything like that, like a free something free? And you start getting emails and emails like, like a ten day trial or something, something like that. Loom, yeah. I just did it yeah. yesterday. Yeah, so a ten day trial would be a good, would be a good example. Mm -hmm. So, um, or even like a an onboarding when you start signing up to something, they will send you a lot of things in the first three days, making sure that you you understand how the platform works, understand how to use it, understand who the support might be, that kind of thing. Some of these folks like HubSpot and and there's another company called Hinge. Yeah. Um, they just send out 
vast, and some of them they spend millions of dollars on the PDFs that they send out. Oh, yeah. And you can just mine these things and just build a whole library. It's actually fantastic. You don't oh, even need sure. to take the course. For sure. So, no, HubSpot yeah. is, is huge doing this kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> They're my role model, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you right away. Okay. So something like this can, can be planned. I know it looks a little bit small, but what it is is that I, I give an example of like a one-week course. So if you are to offering a one-week course, think about the sequencing. So, uh, okay, so I know it's a little bit small, but let's no, say for it's example, it's my fault. Too. No, it's okay, it's okay. So let's say the first day, uh, you can, what you can do is in the email, you can start describing, hey, what is the free online course and what is the benefit? Talk about the benefit first, okay? So they either sign up or they don't sign up. If they sign up, you stop emailing them, okay? But if they don't sign up, you probably want to wait for a day or two Okay, maybe give them a little bit more in depth or send them like something like a sneak peek about the course. Okay, or something that's actionable that they can use. So mm -hmm. they find that you have value and then they want to keep continuing send, like receiving the email. Uh, and then you probably want to wait for a day if they don't sign up. You know, send them a testimonial about people who have worked with you. Right? So give them social proof. Okay, so that would be something that would be helpful. To, and then, um, probably towards the end, you want to send them like a little bit more of an emotional message about the fear of missing out. So FOMO, it's, it's a very powerful feeling. FOMO is a very powerful feeling. Uh, and, and tell the truth, at the end of the day, if they don't sign up, well, just, just let it be. <laughs> just mark them as a lost cause. Uh, not a lot of people need to sign up anyhow. So, so this is a typical email marketing funnel that we implement for clients as well. What kind of conversion can you get from a campaign like that? Um, what kind of conversion really depends on where the platform you would be advertised on as well. Because let's say, for example, um, and it also depends on what, what you're offering as well. So there's, I, I don't want to give a number because I, I don't know the <laughs> truth. Right, it really depends. And it's something that you need to start uh, keep continuing to, to change and manage and update as well. So that's, that's something that you need to start working on as well. So, Okay, so tips and tricks. So uh, making sure that in your email, you use something like a personalization, personalization, so hi, comma, first name. That's like the, the easiest personalization that there is. Uh, segmenting your list is another important thing. So not everybody is interested in all of your service. If you have the ability to understand which of your email clients are interested in a certain type of your, a certain portion of your business, right, that would be quite important. So for Juga Marketing, uh, we're focusing on, on three things. The first thing is lead generation. So lead generation would be something like Google Ads and Facebook Ads. Uh, we're also interested in uh, lead, lead, so lead nurturing. So the nurturing part would be something like an email email marketing campaign. So we have clients who are interested in email marketing campaign. Um, so on our list, we actually would separate them up. We would say, oh, these guys are interested in um, advertisement, and then the other guys are interested in, in um, uh, email marketing. And they can be in both segments. I mean, that's, what, that's how I, I segment them as well. Um, so we want to make sure that the emails are consistent uh, and make sure that you test them before we go. And don't forget, a lot of times people read from your mobile device on your desktop, so making sure that they're, they're mobile uh, friendly on your email is very important. Okay. Uh, and I meant to put this slide on the first slide rather than in here, but I uh, didn't realize that. So who is Juga? So we've been actually been in business since 2012. Uh, my personal experience is that I, I actually used to be a, a, a software engineer. I worked for a, a large tech company in DC, in Richmond. Um, and then I had a chance to work in a startup company uh, back in 2010, uh, 2008 actually, 2008, that's 10 years ago. <coughs> so uh, my experience has actually been helping businesses uh, market uh, from a shoestring, from a shoestring. And uh, right now we're certified in both Google Analytics and Google Ads. Uh, we also a certified consultant for Active Campaign. Okay, so uh, we're quite familiar with these uh, marketing automation tools. Uh, in combination of your advertising. Um, yeah. Okay. So at the end, so we're towards the end. 
um, and I also do have something that I want to show you guys is that um, right now everybody's business is different, different stage. Okay, so we have something called a jam session. So it's called Juga Actionable Marketing Session. It's basically an audit session, an audit and discovery. So we will spend up to 90 minutes uh, of our time in person um, just to help you go through your, uh, your marketing uh, in terms of uh, what are your goals and are they aligned, whatever you're doing, are they aligned with your goals. So through there, uh, we'll probably use tools like Google Analytics. If you send any emails, if you do any social media, uh, we'll actually be uh, looking through them and making sure that uh, we run a report. And then during that, oops, the hard price came up. Okay, so before that, that's when we start um, uh, doing some research and start understanding your business. And during the 90 minutes, that's when we start going over and fine tune that um, a little bit more. Is this before we pay you or is this, this is like a, the tester? Pardon me? Is this before we pay you or after we after we after pay? We, after we paid. And after, then, after we paid. And then that's when we have the permission to go in to your account and say, okay, this is what we have seen. What I find is that people who offer up like a free estimate, that kind of thing, a lot of times they're trying to just you know, get them to the next stage and they don't really do it objectively. Right, so that's why we want to charge money for it. And that's this so, you, so you charge for your jam session? I do. I do. That's, okay. that's the next slide. So the, it's three ninety seven. Okay. So what is that? Uh, once you sign up, you receive town the link and you receive direction to access all the accounts. Okay. And you can actually invite the team to join as well. We can do it remotely. Uh, we've actually done one with uh, remote as well through Skype. Um, then they can see the, the, the screen being shared um, and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's, it's quite quite helpful. Now, are you restricted to only, let's say I'm producing a marketing campaign right now to target America. Right. Are you able to do that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as long as you have the, enough data. Um, so the whole idea about the jam session being an audit session. That way you've discovered first, it. Yeah. But right. I've got to pay for that to get you to say, we can't do it. <laughs> right. So uh, what I find is that uh, with that, um, if so I often have a slide that would say, you know, if you're happy with our session, okay? Uh, we can use that as a service credit if you do decide to use our service later. So okay. to us, that become a more of a discovery session, uh, just so that during those times, I, I can be as objective as possible, right? Um, so that you know you get the best value, rather than if you're relying on somebody who um, is looking to sell more services after that they're like all oh, they're talking about is hey, this is lacking, this is lacking, this is lacking. Right. So I can try to be as objective as I can. He's gonna, but he's gonna provide you with a four hundred dollar education. A four hundred dollar education. Yeah, I think possibly I. You know, I mean, in fairness to you, I, I think I want more than that. I'd want somebody to help me with developing the campaign, and then actually implementing the campaign, right. and mm -hmm. executing, getting the whole thing going. Yep. And that's kind of what I would like. Yeah. I could wave magic wand. Yeah. that I could afford. Yeah, of course, of course. And that's something that we offer as a, as a monthly service, right? Uh, this, this is, if you think about the funnel, this is the part that we say, okay, before we go into a monthly, let's, let's figure out if it's the right fit, right? So that, that is what, what the whole session is about, okay. really. I vouch for his uh, Humphrey's Jam session I did it last fall, and, and it was well worthwhile for me. Uh, uh, quite extensive, quite a lot of work went into it. And, and multiple levels of, of the social media marketing and a lot of different things. So I think it was well worthwhile to see. It's, it's basically a snapshot, uh, well for me anyway, uh, it was a snapshot of, of what I was doing. Uh, maybe one thing, some things I was doing right, some things I was doing wrong or not doing enough of or giving me inspiration to, to delve into different areas. But it was not uh, past, like what you're talking about is yeah. the next step. So if I want to target, I mean, this is an off-the-wall question, but if I want to target uh, 12,000 emails to go out to 12,000 individual realtors in the United States, mm -hmm. I'm like, is that spam? If you don't have the the rules are different. If you don't have the permission, mm -hmm. um, yes, and also the rules are different, uh, mm -hmm. because with America, they have the, a different set of law. But Based much, on much, much, much more lax down there. 
yeah, you'll have to check, you'll, I think what I'm saying, you have to check it out, but it's far, far easier down there than it is in Canada. Can, yeah. Canada's laws are owners and stupid. So. Okay. But it is based on a similar principle. Right, the principles are the same. Uh, yeah. So is so is the European getting them to laws. open it and read exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So is the so is the European laws as well. The GDPR. Like if you actually browse into the the European websites, they actually have the whole big GDPR thing as well. Um, so different territory, different jurisdiction, they have different laws as well. But the principle will be the same. The okay, principle will be the same, meaning that you should get the permission. But you could assist me with that if I were to. Um, I'll, I'll have to work with you a little bit more to see. Um, if it's appropriate. Okay. okay. Um, so some of our past clients, uh, just a quick slide, a group a lot of B2C and some B2B customers as well. Um, so this is it. Any questions? You can answer it. <laughs> yeah. um, for, for email, um, is it better to send PDF or a link or right. actually have whatever you want yeah. kind of pasted in the body of the email? Um, I, I would highly recommend, uh, if you have uh, control to your website, send it as a link in your website, because this way you can track them. You can track them in your analytics, or in your Google Analytics, mm -hmm. because you can see how many uh, people visit that page, and then how many pages are coming from, let's say, email, how many pages are coming from people just randomly searching on Google. Right? Uh, so but a lot of uh, businesses, they don't necessarily have access to that. Uh, the next best thing is probably just to, to uh, not sure, no, link is still the best. Link is still the best way. But if you can't do it, then uh, PDF is probably not the best because PDF tend to be large in file size um, and you can't really track whether they're open. Right. And, and is there any study showing whether uh, the, the recipients of the email are more likely to, or less likely to open that attachment rather than clicking on the link. Yeah, of course. Um, people will be, people who are lazy, or right? they sometimes don't even see, uh, let's, let's say for example, if they're on the phone, they don't even see that there's an attachment. Mm -hmm. right? So you're probably better off just like pasting that content mm -hmm. if it's directly um, important to them. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, good question. He can rig it up so that your image is also a link too. So they'll see an image that'll attract them, yeah. and then they they touch that, and wherever you, wherever you want to go, right. you can, yeah. yeah. Which 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 I I find is probably far better than let's say opening unless I know what the PDF is going to be, I won't open it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But if you click on the on the picture, it's the same thing as opening a link or a PDF. Um, I mean, it still could be linked to some. Actually, a link could also be go to a PDF as well. But it's the, the, yeah. the, that's yeah. my point. If, if the image is telling me what it is, yeah. so that I feel warm and cozy about the image, I'm more, I'm far more, I'm, I'm far, I'm, I'll probably click that as opposed to just yeah. saying, you know, there's the attachment. What can I look down and I see that it's a PDF and I go, mm, yeah. do I really want to, you know? Yeah. It depends on what the relationship is as well, right? Like yeah, if, they, yeah. if they know you do work with them, if these are your client, then mm -hmm. you know just send them a PDF. There. I'm sure they'll open it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but again, you can also put the PDF in your website, right? And then you can set that as a link mm -hmm. as well to the PDF, mm -hmm. right? So that would work as well. And this way you can track them at the same time. Right. Uh, is your business restricted to, to email marketing or...? or, or no, no, no. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we I, I just couldn't in, remember from the website. Yeah, all. we work in three fields, uh, three segments of the of the industry. So the lead generation part would be the Google Ads or the Facebook Ads. So we help companies with creating ads. Do you work with branding or anything like that? Uh, we don't typically work with branding okay. because, um, uh, we, but we have partners that we can work with mm -hmm. the branding side. Uh, the the other thing is the uh, the nurturing side, so email marketing, content marketing, so that type of thing. So you do that, or that, or you farm that out. Uh, we do that in-house, uh, the content marketing. In so we actually, we actually have somebody who's a copywriter, uh, mm -hmm. and then they'll actually go through like an editorial calendar and start helping creating a, a content, and then get distributed to your social media, to your email uh, as well. And the third part of the business is actually, I will not even call it a third part, but it's like the core of a business, is that's the analytics part. So we actually help businesses set up their uh, analytics um, and making sure that they're being tracked properly. So that's another part of the business <laughs> that we do. So yeah, yeah. that's a vital part of it, isn't it? It is. It is. 
Sure. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, I would love to have some uh, feedback from you guys. I think there are more of them. Uh, which is the gap in the way. Do you have a card? <coughs> yeah, I do. I do. So you can okay. pass it up. Like, you have a card. I'll send Randy's details as well. So this is your idea to put on these um, events? Yeah, well, to help people like you. Oh, hi, Kenny. I need help. I need help. <laughs> yeah, I think I can go. You want to just fill it up right now? Pardon me? Yeah, if you don't mind just filling this up for me. Do you need a pen? I'm good.